Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Listen, this is a warning. A lot of us don't realize how demons transfer from one person to another, from one Christian to another. Christian. Now listen, we have to be careful because in this day, in these last days, demons have found ways to infiltrate our lives. There are things where you can actually touch an object and a demon will transfer. You can hold hands with a person, transference. You can commit a sin with a person, transference. You can have sex with a person, transference. All kind of things. You can buy crystals and stick them under your pillow, transference. You can play with sage, transference. You can go and consult with psychics and play with Ouija boards and play with tarot cards. All of that stuff can create an open portal. So what we have to do is be very careful not to step on those minefields that Satan has laid out for us. He's laid out many traps in these last days. And they're becoming more and more subtle because we as a society have blurred the lines. Hmm. We have pushed God out of the picture. So there is no traffic cop directing us and we're falling for everything. All right, listen to this video. I hope it helps you. And I hope you take heed to the warnings. God bless you. We are God's Church of Love online on our Tuesday Bible study, period. And I hope this blesses you. We're reading from Ephesians chapter 2, starting verse, verses 1 through 6. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of of the power of the air. That's two cents. That means Satan. All right, according to Satan. So, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And we're going to talk about that spirit. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, when the word talks about conversation, it means our whole behavior, our demeanor, our way of being. That's what it means. Okay, now, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Wow, where would we be without him? Because I'm telling you the stuff that is plummeting society now, the demonic activity, the evil, the curses, we would be a mess if we didn't have Jesus' as protection and the authority in his name that Jesus gave us. All right, now I'm going to start out by sharing two dreams I had recently. Lord, quicken my memory. One was just last night. The dream I had last night was of church people. Hmm. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But he that does the will of my father. Now listen. There were church workers in this group. One was a very handsome older man. He looked like he was in his 40s or 50s. Good looking guy. But something about him bothered me. Something about his look. There was a hardness there. It just didn't, there was just something that didn't set right with his profession of being a born again Christian. So 
As time went on, not all the details of the dream were clear, but this definitely was. In a particular dream, I'm looking from the ceiling down. That's my vantage point, from the ceiling, like Ezekiel. I'm looking down from the ceiling, and I see him in a perfume sweat, laying on his back in the bed, looking disturbed, really disturbed. I couldn't tell if he was angry, if he was merely upset, if something was weighing heavily on him, if he was feeling guilty, it's hard to tell. Then the camera, the, the whole image, zoomed out, and as it zoomed out, it included the person who was in bed with him. The person in bed with him was a man, a young man from his church. And they were both lying side by side under a sheet without a stitch of clothes on. So that scenario speaks for itself. Shall I go further? No. So anyway, that was one of the things that happened in the dream. These same people, they all belong to the same church. Something happens later and a lady is going to get some help by a guy. And they were just talking about these disappearances and people dying. And they couldn't tell what was going on. There were people right there in the church. And this man goes to help this lady. The man is a very nice guy, very jovial. You can tell he's got a good heart. He really means well. And he goes to help this lady. The lady... She kind of resembled Queen Latifah, just a little bit. It wasn't her, but she kind of resembled her. All right. She had a cap on her head. The front was just like a basic cap with a little beanie. I mean, a little, uh, I can't tell you. I can't remember what those things are. But anyway, in the back, she had, she had turned it backwards so that the light would stay behind her. She used the light to see when she turned it behind, uh, she dimmed it and the lights were like two red lights. They were side by side, almost looked like the face of a binocular. But there was a red light here, a red light here, and they were on the back of her cap. Okay, so picture two red lights on the back of the cap there. So what she does, he's there to help her. She needs help doing something, and they're out somewhere in a in a mountainous area. It's a lot of rocky, a lot of rocky uh, things around boulders and and uh, dry plant life. So it looked like it was almost desert, mountainous, rocky type area. And he's going to help her do something. I don't know what he's helping her do. And everything is going fine. You can tell his full intention was to help the lady. May have been lifting some boulders to put in her yard, or I don't know what. But as soon as she turned her back on him, he was doing whatever he was doing to get ready to help her. He looks up and the two red lights catch his attention. And all of a sudden he goes into a trance. A trance. Now he's not himself anymore. And he grabs something from the ground, a big hard rock, and he rears back. And he, I didn't get to see him hit her. But next thing you know, he's digging a hole. And he's buried her whole body straight down, not horizontal, straight down a vertical burial spot. She's dead. And her head is the only thing above ground. And he creates a mound over the head and packs a lot of soil and grass. And I don't know how he did it, but how he got it to stay up on her head like that. But this big old hump. And I don't know if he used cactus juices to pack it together or what, but that head stayed covered and it stayed above ground. It was really weird, and I couldn't figure out why he would do that. So what I realized 
in the dream watching him, he was under demonic control. He had been taken over. Something that those two red lights triggered. Some of y'all think is coming to me right now to say this. I hadn't even planned on saying this. Some of y'all think it's okay to get hypnotized. You think it's okay to go to a therapist and be put under hypnosis. You think it's okay to go to a magician show and allow the magician to hypnotize you and play all kind of games over you, hypnotically, magically, all of that. You have no idea what's being put on you. And in these last days, we have to be extra careful and watchful because demons are being loosed on people. I saw a video, I did a video of it, of this woman standing in the supermarket, reaching and looking at items. And this one box kept rocking back and forth until it fell on the ground. Nobody was doing it. And it, she bent down to pick it up. If you see something drop on the ground in the store, leave it alone, especially if it's box form. You have no idea what has been put on that stuff. This woman reached down like a normal citizen would do to pick it up and put it back in place. When she picked it up, she stopped a second to look at it. I guess to look at the contents or read it. And next thing you know, She's caught in a trance. The box drops from her hand and she's, no, it didn't drop. She couldn't let go. She couldn't put it up. She was just caught between picking it up and putting it back in place, but she couldn't let go of it. And she's shaking and shaking and shaking and she's jerking and gyrating and she is, she's gone. I don't know who the woman was, but she was gone mentally. Some spirit had taken over her. You have to be careful in these last days what you handle. You have to be careful where you go because you have no idea what's been put on some items because some people do it just for fun. Ruin a person's life. And then the woman starts screaming at the top of her lungs. A lady tries to console her to see if she needs help and she screams. And then her, her family member comes and he's trying to, you know, console her or, or calm her down. And she screams that much more. And she's just, she's out of it. She is gone. I don't know if she ever came back to earth. But you could tell at that point, that woman was totally possessed. Now with this man in my dream, he was so possessed that after he killed the woman, he buried himself up to his neck and then just pull the dirt so it would fall in on him so he could he could stay there and die i guess he figured if he's that bad off he he needs to die so he doesn't hurt anybody else the man was totally totally he's his eyes changed they got fixed they were blank and he just this whole murderous thing came over him he was instantly possessed, just like that. Triggered by the two red lights, which tells me that it, it looks like somewhere down the line, he may have had some hypnosis done. And they may have said, when you see that red light, you kill. Who knows? Who knows what was said? And it may have been done as a joke, and they may have thought they undid it. But when you go into hypnosis, you open yourself up for demons as well. And a murderous demon might have come in into him, a psychopathic demon. Not like they're not all psychopathic, but this one is the dangerous one. Some of them are, are, are a little imps, but this one was a dangerous one. So anyway, so I had another dream about these people lined up. And it was a storm coming. And all these things seem symbolic, don't they? Storm coming. Hmm. Okay. And this person was somehow, 
uh, he knew he was going to be hurt. He knew that that was going to be the end of him. And he was very dangerous. He had been chasing people and killing and hurting, I mean, mangling people, just, just really hurting people. And he was in his trance. And he had a few people with him. And he was getting ready. He knew he was in danger. And somebody reached to help him, and he grabbed them. And when he grabbed them, he glared at them, and he wouldn't let them go. He had a death grip on them. And while he was holding them, he transferred his demon to that person. And that woman let go and went on a rampage of murder started killing people herself under that same influence. Demons can be transferred. When I go to church, I know I'm in a Christian setting. I know the Holy Spirit is the one in control. But I know witches, unsafe people, half-stepping people, they dabble in stuff they shouldn't dabble in. I know they can be carrying stuff. So what I do when they talk about join hands and pray or join hands for our closing prayer or hold a person and pray for them or whatever, uh-uh, first thing I say under my breath, I bind all transference of demons in the name of Jesus. Then I hold hands because I know I'm good. I'm covered. Cover yourself. When you know you have to do a lot of touching some of you have to deal with kids and disturbed children you have to deal with the public start praying that prayer i bind all transference of demons in the name of jesus so you're covered from the day you leave your house to the day you get home and you know you're not going to be touching anybody you're covered it's a good thing to do it's a good safety measure because in these last days demons are at a much higher potency. They're doing things that they didn't do years ago to this degree. They're brazen. They're out in the open because witchcraft is an acceptable form of, it's an acceptable thing in society now because God has been so far removed from the picture that half the world doesn't have a clue. So they call right, wrong, God evil and the devil good. Evil good. They get it back backwards. And they fall for the lies and the propaganda that's put out there. Somebody left me a message saying, you know, how dare you talk evil about witches? And um, I didn't even answer it. But my answer in public to all of you is, if God calls you evil, you're evil. If God calls me evil, I'm evil. If God calls me unclean, I'm unclean. That means I got to clean up. That doesn't mean he calls you that and you're just supposed to be comfortable and stay that way. No, he is more than willing to help you clean, your, clean up your act, clean up your spirit, clean up your emotions, clean up your behavior, clean up your life. He is way more willing than you think he is. When he tells you something about yourself, it's not so that you stay that way. He loves you so much. He'll accept you exactly as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. So if you know you're living a lifestyle that he has made it very plain he's not happy with. Don't be upset with the messengers because they're passing his word along. You go to the source. All we're doing is passing the message on. We're the mail carrier. I'm just handing you his letter. Where are his letters? In the Bible. That's what I just read. Scripture. So you go to the master of the universe. All we are is mail carriers. We can't do anything about what he says is good or evil. What he says stands, whether you like it or not. And you'll find out in eternity 
when you realize you've been played for a fool if you don't give your heart to the Lord now. Now, that's enough of that. But my warning to all of you, to all of you, is stop dabbling. There's a, there's a big crave now. Uh, uh, Marlene and I were talking earlier about sage and and, and we've talked about crystals and some other people talked about uh, uh, certain types of, uh, they call it Christian meditation and Christian uh, yoga. Yeah, yoga means yoking up with idol gods. That's what yoga really means. And you're yoking up, you're opening your spirit to the demonic realm. Why? because it's been presented to you in a pretty package as something very, very beneficial. Well, see, the Bible says Satan comes as an angel of light. He's not going to come looking as ugly and mean and, and, and treacherous and ruthless as he really is. No, he's going to come sweet. Just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Medicine go down. Just a spoonful of sugar. And you take the sugar. And you take the sugar. And you have no idea it's been laced with arsenic. Because it tastes sweet. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. And that's what the devil does. He's out to get you and me. He's out to get the unknowing ones. He's out to get whoever he can. He knows his time is short. And he is loosing demons. I mean, they are coming out in swarms. They're, they're infiltrating society in the most subtle ways. You get an older man in the classroom, a teacher, and <clears throat> he wants to congratulate one of his students that he's been eyeballing for a long time and nobody knows. And he congratulates the student and he gives him a little extra loving in the caress. And he says, here's my number if you ever need to talk. Right. You have no idea what your kids are being exposed to. Who's touching them? And as they touch them, transference. Demon over here, I said, demon over there, demon everywhere. Let's just exchange. You take my demon, I take your demon. Let's play. Yeah. Let's play some demon games. Yeah. Let's play some tit for tat. Let's, let's, let's play house. Let's play husband and wife. Wife and wife, husband and husband, however you like it. We can make it fun and it's harmless. Sure it is. Yeah, right. Yeah, buy that lie if you want to. Buy it if you want to. If all of society, think of this, if all of society turned gay, isn't that funny how they call it? Gay! Yeah, if all of society turned gay, there would be no more society because there would be no more procreation. God knew what he was doing when he put man with woman. He knew what he was doing. He's the one that created the whole package deal. But Satan will twist things around. I saw a video now, and, and the biggest tricks happen in church. I saw a video where they were showing the Pope doing something with this, this vial. This vial had some old blood from a dead person that they called a saint. Yeah. And you know, do you remember in the Bible when the angel, when Jesus was resurrected and the angel was there to announce it? And he asked the disciples, why seek ye the living among the dead? We can't benefit from no dead man's blood, but miracles can happen, right? And we have to remember, the devil can work some miracles too. Ooh, ah, ooh, did you see? That was real. Oh, and we get all caught up in it because we're a looky-loo society. 
and we want to be awestruck. So here we, they're showing a video of the Pope with this thing in his hand. And he's using somebody, some human being's old blood. And as he looks at it, the thing drops down, the amount of blood drops down half full. And they call that a miracle. That ain't nothing but a magic trick. Satan will do all kind of magic tricks. And he'll do it through clergy. If you let him. If you buy into it. Jesus was not a trickster. He did not put on a show. Think about it. Anytime you're at any church, an arena, anywhere, whether it's a magician or a preacher, whether it's a magician or an evangelist, a traveling salesman, I don't care what they are. If they're doing the oohs and the ahs, you back your little happy hips on out of there and go on home. God is not one to put on a show. He'll show you what's up, but he ain't got to prove himself to nobody. Bad English, but you get it. He ain't got to prove himself to nobody. But Satan will bend over backwards trying to prove himself to be more powerful than God. He'll throw that image of himself out there. And then people start thinking, well, maybe I better... I mean, God, did, I watched Aunt so-and-so pray and she still died. But I see my friends with power. Ah! You play with that all you want. You're playing with the hand of death. Not just instant death, eternal death, baby. You don't play with this crap. You don't play with any of it. Your mind will go so far backwards you won't know your name if you saw the neon lights. Your head will be so far up your behind you won't even be able to hold a conversation that makes sense. You keep playing with this stuff. And one day you fall into a trance and you won't know what you're doing. And somebody in your family will be dead at your feet. Or you'll be out there raping or mangling or committing mayhem on somebody, cutting them up in pieces. Or you'll be sitting there trying to eat somebody alive. You got to be careful in these last days. This is not the day and age to toy with stuff you don't know about. The supernatural is not a plaything. And too many of you are out there tinkering with the devil's toys. You're fascinated. You watch these cartoons. They're fascinating because they got witches and warlocks. We were talking about it a few minutes ago. They got programs, a, a, a show where the angels are becoming friends with the demons. Come on now. This is a very dangerous time we're living in. The Bible says even the very elect can be fooled. That means even some of God's people can be fooled if they're not careful, prayerful, and watchful. You must ask God constantly for the gift of discerning of spirits because you need to be able to discern right from wrong, good from evil, godly, from devilish. You have to be able to discern. If a person's smiling at you and offering you a ride because it's raining, you have to consult with God first. Lord, is this a gift from you or is this a trap from the enemy? Like the lady who uh, got in the car with a husband and a wife and a baby. And when she gets, when they get to the gas station, the gas up, because they're going to give her a ride, right? And they're so nice, and they smile, and they look like she looks, so they're her kind of people, so she knows they must be trustworthy. 
And she goes to the restroom while they gas up. And God tells her, go out through the back, head for the woods, and run. Run and don't look back. Run and don't look back. I'll tell you when to stop. Run and don't look back. Very urgent. <coughs> Very demanding tone. She was a Christian. But she leaned to her own understanding instead of following what God had obviously told her. She's going to debate with God, with God, with God, yeah, and say, but they're so harmless. That's a husband and a wife with a baby. Right. She spent the next 11 years of her life being beaten, being abused, being used being used as a slave, being tormented, being oppressed, being threatened, all of that spirit driven out of her by the time she and the, and the girl finally escaped. 11 years of hell when all she had to do was do what God said do and, she, and her life would have been fine. Y'all are too trusting. People in this society, you got cycles over here, cycles over there, cycles, or I, I'm saying psychos, psychopaths. And don't let them be narcissistic psychopaths. You got hell on wheels then. You might as well be with the devil himself. Because those are all his characteristics, baby. And you think it's okay to trust people. You better trust God. You better check with God before you go on a date. I don't care if they're a church person. You check with God first. You see what happened is these were two church members. And the one killed the other. When he went into a trance that he never expected to go into. How many other people had might he have killed after going into a trance? There's too many things we play with in this day and age. We need to leave alone. Some of y'all could be possessed playing demonic games. Some of y'all can be possessed uh, playing or uh, watching demonic movies. Some of y'all can hang out with the wrong crowd too much touchy-feely going on and whoop here comes a demon of lust and you're just overtaken by desire for one of these people that are trying to come on to you and they're trying to get you to go real freaky deaky on you and and you've never done that before but they want you to so the demons get busy working on their behalf because you out there hanging with them where you don't belong if you're a child of god Think about that. If it's that easy for a child of God who has heard some scripture, imagine how easy it is for some of these young people and, and some of these old fools running around here that don't know diddly squat about God or his ways. Don't know about the demonic. Don't know about how the supernatural realm works. My people perish for lack of knowledge. God said that. Don't be ignorant to the devil's devices. That's why we must fellowship with the body of Christ. It's the packs and the herds that don't get hurt. It's the strays that do. The weak that do. The little ignorant, silly, nosy ones that stray away that do get hurt. That get killed and eaten. Stay with God's people. Your safety is in Jesus Christ and in his people. And remember, not all that say, Lord, Lord. Hmm. So you have to make sure that you know the Lord, Lords from the real Lord, Lords. Because God will tell you who to hang with and who to avoid, even in church. Yes, he will. Anyway, 
I hope that opens your eyes a little bit. It's, it's a message of warning in these last days. Be very careful, be watchful, be discerning, stay on guard because we live in a fallen world full of people who are full of demons. God bless you.